NASA has been working toward launching its Space Launch System rocket for a long time, and the price has skyrocketed to several billion dollars per launch. In contrast, SpaceX is building a fully fueled rocket that, if Elon Musk is to be believed, will hardly cost more than the fuel needed for launch. The rocket has already been entrusted to land Artemis astronauts on the surface of the moon in 2025, so why not cut out a step and launch the crew on Starship? NASA Administrator Bill Nelson finally gave his thoughts on that idea. In an interview with the German publication Der Spiegel, Nelson officially declared Starship to replace SLS and Orion is not practical, at least not at this time. He said there's only one rocket that's ready to launch, our SLS, and the Orion space capsule at its tip is also the only vehicle in which the crew can survive the return to Earth. At some point, Musk would like to be able to do the same with his Starship, but we have to deal with the practical here and now. That means, Nelson seems to blow off the idea of launching crew directly on Starship to the moon instead of SLS, but also doesn't sound like he hates the idea. In other words, Starship could replace SLS and Orion, but not in the near immediate future. And honestly, that's a truly perfect politician's answer. Nelson talks about the here and now and states that SLS slash Orion is the only rocket ready to launch. Some may argue SLS is no more prepared to launch than the fully stacked Starship we saw earlier this year. However, SLS has a much clearer path towards launch and obviously more development time under its belt. So when the administrator says, we have to deal with the practical here and now, he's talking about the short term. To NASA, SLS is ready, and for now, it's the only rocket in the near term to launch the Artemis crew. Although it wouldn't be wise for NASA to stick with this mindset into the late 2020s, Starship should be well tested and flight proven, assuming the development phase succeeds. It would, in fact, be practical for NASA to move away from the SLS when a commercial competitor becomes available, like Starship. Between cost savings and less reliance on Congress footing the billions for yearly launches, like the later plans for the Artemis program show. Regardless, there is an undeniable fact that Starship has been stuck on the ground because of SLS for a long time. The fact that SpaceX skips the iconic Duo 420 is one of the clearest proof. Now, even if receiving the final PEA in early June, SpaceX will also need to receive an FAA license for orbital Starship launches, which could take days, weeks, months, or even a year or more. And although Musk is extremely confident in SpaceX's alternatives, the July schedule is actually still too optimistic. At first glance, the fact that Starship ran aground was the FAA's fault. But as you may have discovered, the FAA is, after all, just a minion of the government. And when it comes to the government, NASA is their baby. Why is this? Well, this is closely related to SLS and Congress's so-called honor. When Congress created the SLS in 2011, it directed NASA to fly the rocket before the end of 2016. The SLS will now launch no earlier than August 2022, which is more than six years behind schedule. For the Orion spacecraft, the situation is arguably worse. The spacecraft was intended to fly humans into deep space, and it's unlikely to do so before at least 2024 with the Artemis II mission. This means NASA will have spent two decades developing a vehicle that is essentially a larger, modernized version of the Apollo capsule. Not only that, but they also spent an enormous amount of money, up to more than $23 billion, on this rocket that can only fly once. With such a terrible investment, if the SLS flies after Starship's launch, it would be a slap in the face to the US government and NASA. The government definitely won't allow this to happen. As such, Starship is still covered in dust at Starbase. But the US government has probably forgotten that it was SpaceX and Elon Musk who ended US space's shameful, nearly a decade-long dependence on Russia. In other words, without SpaceX, NASA would still be exclusively dependent upon Russian Soyuz rockets and spacecraft to get its astronauts to and from the space station it spent tens of billions of dollars to help build. Even in a best-case, SpaceX-free scenario, NASA might instead be dependent upon a rocket with Russian engines to launch its own astronauts. SpaceX has saved the U.S. space industry, but the U.S. government is getting in the way of their benefactor because of their ego. 
Perhaps they should take a closer look at the current state of Russian space to envision the future of US space without SpaceX. Russia used to be a space power, but everything seems to be coming to an end. A 2800-word domestic newspaper warns of the Russian space program's rapid collapse. Titled, The Space Program is Rotting from Within, the article begins with the declaration that Russia's space program has a shortage of competent and highly qualified staff, obsolete facilities and technology, and systemic leadership weakness. And that's just the opening paragraph. Dmitry Popov, the author of that article, goes on to state that Russian space companies are delinquent on promised deliveries for hundreds of contracts. He said Roscosmos is struggling even to build its mainstay vehicles, the Soyuz rockets, and Progress spacecraft. Besides that, there are a bunch of other projects that have been beset by construction delays and corruption under Rogazin's not-so-strict stewardship. The overall portrait Popov paints of Roscosmos is that of a wasteful, increasingly decrepit enterprise. Speaking of increasingly, Russia's space program seeks to project its greatness in space through symbolic acts rather than technological achievements, such as the launch of a Russian movie star, sending a robot nicknamed Fedor to space, or making entirely hollow promises about a moon landing in 2030. As a result, hundreds of billions, if not trillions, of rubles fly away not into space, but fecklessly and pointlessly disappear down the drain. All these beautiful PR presentations of art-decorated rockets and wild promises are still little more than cover for the rapid collapse of Russia's space industry. These accounts are eerily reminiscent of a familiar name, NASA. And it looks like NASA is moving forward in stepping backwards with Roscosmos. Which begs the question, if there were no SpaceX, then what would be left of the US space industry? Please, don't forget that China has come out of its darkest period. They are making strong strides and quickly catching up, even surpassing the US. Most of all, they are wholeheartedly supported by their own government, and that is the biggest motivation for their breakthroughs. What about us? Without SpaceX, we have nothing to compete with China. But conversely, if Starship actually works, it will not only be beneficial to SpaceX, but the entire U.S. space industry. And at that time, the U.S. will have the biggest advantage in the space race that other countries can't hope to match for decades. Tesla, SpaceX, Musk, and all of his talents are a blessing to this country, and we wait for the right decisions from the appropriate leaders. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. In any case, that's it for today's episode. We thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Also, I understand that I do not pronounce things correctly 100% of the time, so if you found something that I mispronounced, please let me know. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.